In Akron, Ohio, we have one of the premier historic mansions in the U.S. Welcome to Forum 360. I'm Ardith Keck, your host today. Uh, Stan Hewitt Hall and Gardens has an extraordinary reputation across the country and the world. With me to guide us through a tour of this renowned museum is Linda Conrad, President and CEO of Stan Hewitt, and Gail Marie Fort, Vice President for Outreach and Communications. There are very few people from Northeast Ohio who have not heard of and probably have toured Stan Hewitt. But we recently won recognition to tell us that Stan Hewitt is known across the country. Linda, can you tell us about that recent recognition? Well, I certainly can. Just as early as last fall, um, the uh, USA Today, and they, they ask for ratings for all kinds of things across, uh, the, I guess, the spectrum. But we were uh, voted the best historic home tour in America, which wow. was amazing. And we're so thrilled with that. And that is wonderful. Yeah, it's really great. And uh, what I think people don't understand about Stan Hewitt is that it's the sixth largest historic estate in the country. And for many experts, it's considered to be the most significant historic estate in the country because of not only the size, but the condition and the extensive collection. Uh, it's all original to the family. Uh -huh. So there's so many really special things about Stan That's Hewitt. unusual for a house this It is, large. Mm -hmm. it yeah. is. Well, we'll talk more about the history, but uh, can you describe Stan Hewitt? Uh, Gail Murray. I'm happy to. Um, it's obviously a historic estate. It's 101 years old this season and we have a 65,000 square foot manor house on the estate and there are an additional four um, other historic buildings. It sits on 70 acres of gardens and grounds so included also are eight historic gardens and they all have a personality of their own. We have the English garden and the Japanese garden and um, and then in addition to that we have a shop, um, Molly Shop and Cafe which is in our carriage house um, and then of course we are open for tours. We have very special events that we host every season. Five of them are signature events and um, we have lots of weddings and just wonderful <laughs> things that occur at the estate all season. Okay, all you're season. beginning to answer some of my <laughs> questions. <laughs> uh, that Stan Hewitt is an unusual name. What does it mean? It means stone quarry. It's old English for stone quarry. Okay. And I should have also said, obviously, that Stan Hewitt was the home of F.A. Cyberling and his wife Gertrude, who co-founded the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. So when they searched for the land, the most uh, dominant natural feature on the land was a stone quarry. And because the, ho the home is built in the English, uh, the Tudor Revival style, they adapted the Stan, Stan Hewitt name. How did the house happen to become a museum? I'll take that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> After both F.A. and Gertrude had passed away, um, in about 1957, the family had decided that that would be the highest and best use. And so they created a foundation, and it's been in existence as some place for the public to enjoy ever since. Ah, oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And tell me more about the Cyberlings. They, they were very unusual as a couple. They absolutely were. Obviously, he built the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, and later the Cyberling Tire Company. But the, the two of them were philanthropists. They were very much family people. Um, they certainly were very committed to community. Um, and very instrumental in starting, she was, Tuesday Musical and the Akron Garden Club. Uh, they participated in creating what is now Cleveland Clinic Akron General Hospital. Back then it was People's Hospital, um, also Trinity Lutheran Church. Um, I might be missing okay. something here. Um, <laughs> Bucktel School. Bucktel, Bucktel yep, College. Colleges, right. Yeah. So very, they're very um, instrumental in creating Akron and, and helping it grow and become one of the fastest growing cities in America back at the turn of the 20th century. And Gertrude, as you said, Tuesday Musical, mm -hmm. she was very musical. And they had, there's a music room in Stan Hewitt, mm -hmm. and they had performances there. And they did. They did. By some of the major names in mm -hmm. the music world that we know. That's right. And we still use it. We still use it. We do. Our it's organ has been fully restored, and so we use it to delight guests every single day. And then we also have some guest organists who have concerts at specific times during the season. Mm -hmm. But people like the Van Traps, the Von Traps uh, actually sang in the home. And so they were the host of many things in Akron. And so if you were coming our way, you probably uh, were a guest in that home. 
And you said that it is all original furniture? It's all original mm -hmm. furniture. There have been some things that have been given through the years that sometimes we use for educational purposes or we put out in a, you know, one of our, our season themes in terms of exhibits. But for the most part, it is the Cyberlings home. I always like to say that if you see a hairbrush on a dresser, it belonged to one of the like, Cyberlings right. family members. <laughs> right. so. Probably without the hair. <laughs> well, at hopefully, this point, yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Was Stan Hewitt built by someone famous? Is it a... Um, it was, um, the architect was Warren, the, ar the landscape ar architect was Warren Manning, and um, the home architect was Charles Schneider, Schneider, Charles Schneider, who was with uh, Post and Sons in the Cleveland office, mm -hmm. and uh, they worked very closely with Mr. and Mrs. Cyberling to develop the design for the home. They traveled with them to England right. to look at English manners and make a decision about some of the elements of the home. So the house itself is inspired by three English manners, and um, one of them is, is open to the public today. That's Haddon Hall. Two of the others are privately owned, uh, and Aquil's Manor is one that we recently uh, made a connection with and so hopefully one day we'll take some of our our very favorite uh, supporters and friends to take a look at that home and see the, the inspiration. And there is some beautiful woodwork in the hall yes. mm -hmm. uh, on the first floor and I understand that that was inspired by an English home. Very much so, the linen fold mm -hmm. hallway. Mm -hmm. So the linen fold. Well in fact folks that love the show Downton Abbey, yes. you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the series that just finished, will come to Stan Hewitt and, and almost say, boy, this looks just like it. Well, it's all of that same time frame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really sure, sure is reminiscent of it. And uh, they, since they took some of these ideas, did they actually bring things from England to the home? Or did they just use? I think there was some did. some of the paneling in the bedroom in the master bedroom. Correctly, they did. There mm -hmm. was a home that was being um, taken down, and they reclaimed it and brought it, and it's part of the master bedroom today. But uh, Hugo uh, Huber, who was their interior designer from New York, made the trips to abroad with the Cyberlings, and so they bought things there, and they became part of our interior uh, decor. At the and home. and you don't just in those days you didn't just hop on a plane. No, <laughs> you took a steamer <laughs> and a ship. And yes, a, it was <laughs> it would not as easy as trail. it is today. Absolutely. You, know? you have a program this year called Sharing Our Stories, mm -hmm. and I understand there are photos and phones. Tell me about it. I'll just, I can do that. You want to share that? Sure. Take I can have <laughs> Every year we we tell a different um, story through a, a, a overarching theme, if you will. And so yes, sharing our stories. This is the year of all about the family. And so throughout the house, we have um, brought stories that are little known to our guests through pho uh, photographs and um, also some exhibit pieces. But two, what you're referring to, the phones, uh, those are what we do every year called touch it stations. So they're a great thing for children's and small little people to pick up and what you will hear in specific rooms is the recorded voices of some of the family members talking about that specific room. So it's a great way to kind of get reconnected to mm -hmm. people they, you know, our guests have never met and you can hear it from their own words. Exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's been I, a lot yeah. of fun. I look forward to that. I always have guests to, that I need to bring to Stan <laughs> Hewitt. wonderful. <laughs> every year, so I've done the tour many, many times. Alcoholics Anonymous mm -hmm. was founded here. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you, where? Uh, in the Gate Lodge, actually. And Henrietta Cyberling is the one who introduced Bill W. and Dr. Bob to one another on Mother's Day in 1935. So we just celebrated the 81st anniversary of Alcoholics Anonymous. And the intent was to have a just a very brief meeting. And I think they ended up talking long into the night and established the 12 principles that are still followed today. Mm -hmm. They, uh, they, they, Members of Alcoholics Anonymous come every year yes. uh, on, Founders, on Day, Founders Day, and uh, it's a, a phenomenal. I live very close to Stan Hewitt, yes. and consequently, I see all the activities mm -hmm. and all the excitement and all it, the motorcycles really roaring up to the manor house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite an ex a really special um, event for us. I think it's one of our favorites because it's very low key. The guests are just so appreciative that we open up the estate to them and they have a chance to see where it all started. And it's just a, a really feel good yeah. weekend when they're here. And it in is. the Gate Lodge, you have a recording. 
We do. Of yes. some mm -hmm. of those happenings. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. At the uh, in inception of, uh, mm -hmm. of the uh, AA. Yes. AA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and lots of people write uh, memories they and do. write yes. uh, thanks and praise mm -hmm. and so forth. So it's very personal as well. Mm -hmm. It truly is. And I think they just enjoy the time to just kind of relax and share you know, that, that very quiet time with one another. And mm -hmm. you're right, they do have the reflections tent that allows them to, to commit their memories to right. paper. Mm -hmm. And folks come from all over the world. Mm -hmm. We're all always meeting people from far, far away. And some come every single year yeah. just to come back and revisit and, and meet up with friends. And I had a cute conversation yeah. this year with um, one, of the one of the guests. And I asked, how do connecting the motorcycles with founders, say, how did that ever become part of it? And I guess... Because uh, there are many motorcycles. Yeah, yeah. There are many <laughs> motorcycles. And, as, and he, he recounted the fact that, you know, as guests coming back, the... The Founders Day guests were enjoying their bikes, and so others go back home buy a bike so they can bring it back to Founders Day. So it's become this kind part of, of the tradition. You know, part and parcel of Founders Day, which is kind of fun. It is. <laughs> it is. We're talking today about Stan Hewitt, and that is a manor house in uh, Akron, mm -hmm. and all of northeastern Ohio knows Stan Hewitt and loves Stan Hewitt. And with me is Linda Conrad, who's CEO and uh, President of Stan Hewitt, and Gail Marie Fort, who is Vice President for Outreach and Communications. And we're in, um, the, the, the house is open when? The house is open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 until 6, and we um, actually start our season on April the 1st and run through December the 30th every year. And the months that you're not open, people are busily scurrying about. Oh my gosh, it's yes. a very busy time for us. We laugh and say sometimes it's busier than during the actual <laughs> season. <laughs> Does it cost a lot to tour? Not at all. No. Um, I think our lowest... Self-guided self is $15 mm -hmm. and a guided tour is 19 And then, of course, children are a lot less than that and we have member rates as well. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. can you tour just the grounds? You can for 12 with all those gardens yes, and the can. play, play area gardens, right? <laughs> for children. Yes. Tell me about it. Yes. They are, it, it is a wonderful spot. Well, yes. we are very, very pleased to be able to bring that through, the, through a gift of the Orr Family Foundation. Three years ago, uh, we were able to create a little land just for little people that is um, very uh, connected to Stan Hewitt. So they have their own Tudor Playhouse that happens to have a slide and it has a marble chase that ties back to the historic uh, beginnings of marbles here in Akron. And it has a little walkway where you can hear about the other aspects of Stan Hewitt. There was once a dairy farm and a poultry farm, and there was horses on the, on the, on the grounds. And music and bubbles. And yes. music and bubbles. That's how you <laughs> enter through Harmony Hall, and you'll hear all the different uh, instruments that are playing in the manor house or that were part of the manor house. And then there's, of course, an antique truck has to be tires mm -hmm. so that's our motion garden and you can actually get into the truck and play the music and mm -hmm. and um, pretend you're driving mm -hmm. and it's actually planted as a garden as well and then there's Joe Joe is the family dog and so you can go through Joe's dog house and hear him pant, which often scares the smallest of the children. Yes, <laughs> they're a little surprised. <laughs> and then they end up in a little bone-shaped um, sand pit. And then every year, and tying back to, that's probably the smallest detail that we tie back to the season theme, but this year you'll find a family of ducklings buried. So they unearth mm -hmm. the duckling, and then there is Splash Fountain. And it ha it's all about the sundial and the importance of positioning of Stan Hewitt on the property. And children can splash through the fountains. They love it. <laughs> what a fun place. Isn't that great? I, I took uh, my, some little ones there last year, and they're coming again soon and mm -hmm. they have asked to oh. please go back to the play area. <laughs> we love to hear that. <laughs> Very popular. Butterfly house. Yes. yes. You Our have uh, actual butterflies. We do. We do. And the they're butterf there now. Yes, they just returned on yes. yeah, Saturday, I believe. They, they did. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, we're thrilled about that. It's um, a habitat that's sponsored by the J.M. Smucker Company, and they've, this is our fourth or fifth fourth season, year. I think. Mm -hmm. um, all domestic butterflies, of um, mostly from Ohio, and so, and we do have a volunteer corps um, 
folks who are from the park system, Cuyahoga Valley National Park and also Metro Parks who come and help with some informal learning. Um, you're able to actually catch the butterfly on the end of a, a Q-tip that has some nectar on it and just really enjoy the experience of being um, you know, in that space and having the butterflies land on you and uh, learning about their, their uh, science, the science behind them. And you can also understand what it takes to put a butterfly garden together because our horticulture team uh, installs the most perfect plants. So yes. you'll come away with a uh, takeaway if you want to do that at home. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You have, in the fall every year, you have the Ohio Mart, yes. which is well known mm -hmm. and very popular. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Ohio Mart this year is between October 6th and the 9th. Mm -hmm. And it is going, been going on for how many years now? Is their 50th anniversary? 50, oh, this yes, year. 50th anniversary. Yes. Oh. yes. And uh, it is an artisan show and, and one of the nicest of the season in our area. And we typically have over 120 different artists that, that exhibit their wear. And those that love to shop attend, and it goes all weekend. Mm -hmm. And we have wonderful food and music, entertainment. You can buy raffle tic tickets for prizes and all mm -hmm. kinds of things. So. It's, it's a big very tradition. beautiful merchandise. It is. I do my Christmas shopping yes. there oh, every year. We hear that quite a lot. Yeah, it do. is a juried show, so mm -hmm. always selecting you know among the best of the products that are out there. And they're new, they're new uh, artisans every season, so yes. even if you've come year after year, you're going to always find something new. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and Decca Hall. Decca Hall. <laughs> Check the hall. Our it favorite, is. our biggest, yes, our is. largest, <laughs> <laughs> our most yeah. spectacular. I'll let Linda take that one too. Oh, okay. Obviously, <laughs> Christmas time. Christmas yes. time. And it was important to the Cyberlings. So, of course, every event that we do ties back to the mission and the stories of the estate. But Christmas was so important to them. So, we celebrate that from the day after Thanksgiving through um, the day before Christmas Eve. And we uh, take our season theme and we decorate the manor house, usually about 20 rooms in that theme. And this year is Storybook Christmas because storybooks are such an important part of being a family. Mm -hmm. And so you read stories with your family. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening in the manor house. And then we've been expanding it over the last three or four years. And so we're well over 800,000 lights on the property now. We're probably mm -hmm. closer to 900,000 lights, but we haven't counted lately. So we're <laughs> still saying oh, just over 800,000. But we do, we, the, the um, children's garden becomes gingerbread land. And then the Corbin Conservatory is just a glow of lights and our big uh, poinsettia tree mm -hmm. and some activities for children and for families. And then we, in the courtyard, Santa greets families every evening and lights the center tree there. And we have our famous gingerbread cookies that are baked and, sir, and, and you can purchase. And uh, a warming fire that we mm -hmm. put in just a little while ago. And of course, Dazzle was installed three years ago. It's an animated light show that's in the Great Garden that's spectacular. Five acres of lights and computerized tree. And, and last year we introduced our um, animated window, which was um, a view of downtown Akron, circa 1929, I think. And this year, Linda. We have some new things. <laughs> we always do new things. So I think that's, that's also a signature of Stan Hewitt. If you think you've seen it, you haven't seen it because every year there's a new theme, there's new exhibits, and everything's tied to our theme. Mm -hmm. So we're adding this year in, in the storybook um, uh, sort of theme. idea, mm -hmm. we have a new meet and greet for Santa. And Santa will have a special friend that joins him, and it will be Rudolph. And Rudolph will be in his own barn and stall, and mm -hmm. Rudolph is animated. So he's like a Disney animated character, and he's life-size. So he will come to life <laughs> and be with Santa and amaze families. He's just absolutely darling. And yes. then we are doing our second animated window, and because that would be where Santa used to do his meet and greet. Mm -hmm. We have created um, a gingerbread bake shop. Uh, little bakers that are coming to life in the window uh, for delight families. It's just very darling, really yeah. cute. So <laughs> we have to be sure to get there you and do. protect the well, You do. And we're also introducing Cookies with Santa this year, which we is exciting. Are. So for families who want to come a little bit early with the little ones who may not have the attention span to stick through the whole evening, they can come and can, um, meet I'd Santa. I'll let Linda decide, de describe sure. the fun of that one, I'll too. I'll be happy to do yeah. that. Uh, cookies with friends and the bakers that you see in the animated window will come to life and you can uh, 
decorate cookies about an hour before Deck the Hall actually begins. And this is great for families who have a little smaller children and they get to start their experience early. So wow. they arrive early, they go through, they start before all the crowds start to come in. And so before um, Christmas, Santa will join the bakers. And then after Christmas, the gingerbread man will join the bakers. You have something new this year called, and I'm very curious because I don't know about this, Bug Collection and Explorer Backpacks. I'm sure. The backpacks are really fun. They were an addition that we um, have available in Play Garden, and within the backpacks are magnifying glasses and bug collectors and little um, guides about flora and fauna. So the parents can come and let uh, check out a backpack for each of the children that they might have with them, and that gives them a new way to kind of explore Play Garden, mm -hmm. but also the entire estate. So Here. it's just to encourage them to run throughout the estate and, and see a little bit more of it and get connected with nature and just, you know, enjoy the experience that much more. So this is a, like a rented um, no, just backpack? No, you just borrow it. Free. Yeah. You, you just, oh, you borrow yes, it? You check it out it and return leave. it at the end, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. That mm -hmm. sounds like fun. It is, it is fun. Mm -hmm. And we located sort of like the headquarters for family fun at the Play Garden. So that's where you would pick up your brochure on geocaching and mm -hmm. questing and the backpacks and have fun in the Play Garden. Mm -hmm. And the butterflies are right nearby. We've got at home with nature as well. Mm. Okay. And you have wolf walks. Woof. Mm -hmm. Walks. Yes. <laughs> wolf walks, yes. But we hope we don't have wolf walks. <laughs> <laughs> so we do invite um, folks to bring their dogs and walk the estate on Sundays. And uh, there is a nominal charge associated with that, but it's just that one opportunity every month, I believe, right, that they're able to do that. Every or every Sunday, Sunday excuse every me, Sunday. every Sunday, except for event Sundays. Right. So, and people love it. We put out water for the dogs and they you know, give, th give a treat. Oh. We have so. a number of, of families who that's, the dog is part of their guest base too so yes. we we mm -hmm. see often a oh gosh i don't know 100 125 dogs on sundays mm -hmm. i'm just going to mention some of the things because we don't have time for them all but <laughs> there's a, a good year band concert yes. there and that's in the fall yes mm -hmm. there is murder in the mansion mm -hmm. and that's in the fall yes in it October. is and mm -hmm. then you have a fall trunk show yes we do. that's brand new as well that's brand new yes right. what is that well well i'll take that one <laughs> all right on September 15th, well, our Molly store has grown and grown and grown, and we have beautiful gifts. And, I, and what I'd like to share with uh, your viewers is that you can come to the store anytime you'd like without admission to the grounds. So it's really just a gift shop, but it's grown with popularity and beautiful things, and we have been um, quite successful with clothing. And so we are limited in space, so we were that we are going to grow um, that opportunity is through this trunk show that starts on the 15th of September this year. And we've put to, curated a big group of wonderful clothing brands, almost art to wear, and they will be featured in a runway show. Ah. And it'll be cocktails and hors d'oeuvres, and then you'll be able to buy the product. You'll be able to get these lines that we don't find locally. So uh, it's kind of an interesting way to kind of celebrate Gertrude's love of style and fashion and we have a lot of fun with the, the historic collection obviously but then we translate that to modern day they will offer this great line and multiple brands of they're not quite designer but they're i would say high style and unique mm -hmm. so it'll be Very fun special things. and we only have room for 120 folks so mm -hmm. we are um we expect to sell that out and then we will bring the bo the boutique back for ohio mart so it'll be part of our ohio mart as well mm. And you have teas throughout the year. We do. And Veterans Day is free it's for free. veterans. Yes. It is. And you have an Easter egg hunt. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Shakespeare is going on. Shakespeare begins mm -hmm. this Friday. What, the first of what three happens plays. with Shakespeare? Does Shakespeare come? No. Yes. He yes. <laughs> shows up. No. Yes, with the uh, Ohio Shakespeare Festival. So they put on typically two plays every, every season, a comedy and a drama. This year they're also adding a third one, mostly for families, and it's mm -hmm. Robin Hood, um, which should be very fun. So, But the first of the three plays begins this Friday, and it's The Tempest, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, and they run for three consecutive weekends, Thursday through Sunday. And then it's Robin Hood, and then it's Macbeth. Yes. Now, suppose people... Um, they hear us talking about all these things, but they want to know the dates and so forth and so on. They should tell, tell us about how they can <laughs> find out. The way to, to find out everything about Stan Hewitt is go to our website, stanhewitt.org. That's easy, stanhewitt.org. Yes. And, and Hewitt is spelled H-Y-W-E-T. 
okay, because mm -hmm. yeah. Stan is easier, but, <laughs> yes. and that's, that's all, Stan Hewitt is one, one word, word. Right. correct, dot, dot org. org, yes, right. that's easy. Mm -hmm. and, okay. if, and if you'd like to call us, you can call us so we can help you through it, too. What's the number? Oh, see. What number should we give them? We'll <laughs> give them, let me confirm the right number for you, 330-836-5533. Uh, Okay, and, and they'll get more information. You, um, you are just finishing a huge project, the wall. Yes. Mm -hmm. The spectacular <laughs> wall. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means that, that um, Stan Hewitt will have a wall around the major That's streets. That's right. Mm -hmm. It is 2,200 linear feet. Whoa. It costs $1.3 million to restore it, and that was thanks to a lead gift from the state of Ohio. So we're thrilled, and we, we think our neighbors are probably as thrilled as we are that that wall is now We're intact. very happy, yes. <laughs> and it was um, rebuilt with a historic dry stone method. So if you think about the bridges uh, in Scotland and England and, you know, how strong they've been over centuries, that's how this wall has been built, so with dry stone stacking. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really exciting to talk about Stan Hewitt, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm very fond mm -hmm. of it as thank well. You. Thank you, Linda, and thank you, Gail Marie. Well, thank We're you. happy to be here. This is Ardeth Keck for Forum 360. Forum 360 is brought to you with support from Electric Impulse Communications, Kim and Harvey Nelson, Rubber City Radio Group, Acronist.com, Hudson Cable, Medical Mutual of Ohio, Forum 360 supporters, and the Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron.